Hey guys, welcome back. In this Blender video, we'll be modeling this mechanical style part you see here. It's a simple but practical shape and a great exercise for improving hard surface modeling and clean topology in Blender. So without wasting any time, let's jump right in. First, we'll add a circle. So here in the image, I saw that this part around 4.5 units looks similar. It's not exactly 4.5, but according to me, it feels close. You can adjust it if you feel it's not. So extrude this down negative 4.5 units on the Z axis, press minus because it's the negative axis going down. Now over here in the image, I saw that this lower part, two units looks similar. So extrude this down two units, then select this edge and fill this part. Then inset this inwards about 0.2 units. Then again, inset inwards 0.1 units. Then move it down slightly and delete this face. Then to make our life easier, we'll add a mirror modifier. So select this side area and delete it. Then go over here, add a mirror modifier and enable clipping. Now switch to side view, select these vertices and delete them. Now we'll extrude this part straight out. So select this edge and unselect this bottom vertex because we don't want it to be extruded. Now extrude this part straight out on the Y axis, then press SY0 to flatten it. Now move this part while looking at the reference image to match it closely. Dissolve these edges because they're too close to each other. Now we'll add cuts here, keeping the same spacing like the cuts you see over here. Now turn on auto merge and set the snapping type to vertex. Then move and snap these vertices like this. Press control while snapping. Now add two loop cuts here and press J to join these vertices. We could also join this one over here, but we'll keep it like this only. Now select these edges and use loop tool space to space them evenly. Now extrude this edge slightly outward while looking at the image. Then move this vertex down. Now add a cut here. Before finalizing the position, press E to make the loop even with the surrounding geometry. Press F to flip it if it's matching the wrong side. Then slide it into place and click to confirm. Now select this face and extrude it out. We'll extrude it about two units. Now add a cut in the middle and add loop cuts over here as well. Make sure these faces look nice and square. Over here, add loop cuts on both sides equally. Now select these faces and extrude them out about 0.5 units. Then extrude this upward and snap it to this vertex line. And then on this part, add uh, loop cuts like this. At the bottom here, select these faces and extrude them down about 0.5 units. Then add a cut here. Now select these faces like this and inset inwards slightly, then use loop tool circle. Now, if you try to scale this circle and snap it to this border vertex over here, you'll notice it doesn't snap. So to fix that, go to the snapping properties and enable the scale option. Now, when you scale the circle and try to snap, it will snap properly. Then move it up and snap it exactly. Then inset inwards again and delete these faces. Now select this edge and dissolve it. Delete this part as well. Select and delete these faces. Now select this part and duplicate it. Then move it back and snap it over here. Now select this edge and press F to fill this part. Then select both of these edges, go over here and use bridge edge loops. Now select this full edge. 
and extrude it. Move it on the x-axis, it will clip in the middle because of the mirror modifier clipping. Now count how many loop cuts we need. We need four. So add four loop cuts, then press F and fill this part. Now we'll make this part curved, so select this edge and bevel it like this. Then select these vertices and join them. Here the loop needs to flow this way. So dissolve these edges, and here we're changing the direction of the loop flow so it flows this way. Do the same thing on the other side as well. Now go into front view, select these vertices, and move them up slightly. Then move and adjust these vertices so they're nicely spaced. Slide and merge this edge here, and dissolve this edge on both sides. Now go into front view and move, slide, and adjust these vertices nicely so that they're evenly spaced. Add a cut here, then join these vertices. Select these faces, inset inward slightly, then use loop tools circle, then extrude and snap it at the back. Delete these faces from this part. Now select both of these edges and use bridge edge loop. Select this vertex and slide it down uh, to give this part a curved shape. Then select the back vertex and press shift Y. This will move the vertex only on the X and Z axis. Now snap it to this vertex and now this looks good. Now in the reference image, you can see some parts at the back are extruded inward. So we'll do that here. So over here, select the faces of the area where that part needs to be extruded inward. Normally, if we extrude inward, you'll see it leaves unnecessary faces on the boundaries. So instead, press Alt-E and choose Extrude Along Manifold. Now it extrudes cleanly. If some faces are still left, that means the normals aren't correct. So over here, turn on face orientation to check, undo this step. Now here you can see the normals on these few faces are not in the correct direction. So select the full mesh and press shift N to fix the normals. Now select the exact part again. Use extrude along manifold again. And now it extrudes properly. If a few faces still remain, just select and delete them. Now add a cut here and join these vertices like this. Do the same thing over here as well. Now we'll do this part here. So add a cut in the middle, select this edge, extrude it up and snap it over here. Select both of these edges and press F, then select this edge and keep pressing F to fill up to here. Now select this part and fill it. Add a few loop cuts here and add the same number of loop cuts on the other side as well. Then join the vertices like this. Using the knife tool, add cuts something like this. Then slide the vertices to space them nicely. Now if we add a subdivision modifier, you can see this part holds up really well. Over here, flip the normals to fix this issue. And when we shade it smooth, you'll notice it looks clean and smooth. With no visible artifacts at all, that's because this area is flat. And if we change the matte cap material, you'll notice it even more clearly. At the bottom here, add a few loop cuts. Add a cut over here and another cut here. Now do something like this. Select this edge, extrude it down and snap it at the bottom. Fill this part like this. Now we'll do this uh, small part here, 
select these faces over here and extrude them out. Press SY0 to flatten it. Move and adjust it nicely. Extrude it out slightly again. Then extrude this part down. Add a cut here and move it over here. Move this part slightly up. This part is slightly rounded, so select this edge and bevel it. In the options, turn on clamp. Slide this edge and merge it here. Now over here, add a cut, then select this edge and move it down like this. Now we'll bevel all the border sharp edges. To select them faster, go over here and use Select Sharp Edges. This select all the sharp edges. Now unselect the edges we don't want to bevel. Select this edge because it needs to be sharp. Once everything is selected properly, bevel the edges and in the bevel options, set the shape to complete one. Then choose the arc option. So the corners look like this. Now add a cut here and then join this arc corner part like this. Do the same for all the other arc corners where they exist. Here, slide this vertex slightly. Select the edge of this hole and then bevel it as well. Then add a cut in the middle here. Here, join this part as well. Now all the arc parts are joined. Now enable the subdivision modifier and turn on cavity over here. Now this is nicely modeled and everything looks clean and smooth. Now we'll create the hole over here. So select these faces of this part. Select faces somewhere over here where the hole is as seen in the reference image. Then inset inward slightly. Then scale these vertices on the z-axis and slide this vertex. Scale and slide the other vertices as well and try to get the shape right nicely. Now select these faces and extrude them inward. Over here, this part is slightly rotated. So to do that, select this vertex and press Shift S cursor to selected. Then change the pivot point to 3D cursor. Now select these interfaces on the z-axis, rotate this part like this. This will rotate it around the 3D cursor using the cursor as the pivot, not the object's center. Finally, select these border edges and bevel them. Then here, slide these vertices to space them nicely. If you notice some artifacts or pinching on these corners, we can fix that using a shrink wrap modifier technique. So to do that, first select these faces somewhere over here, then duplicate them and separate by selection. Now select the duplicated part, select this edge and move it up like this. Now select the original mesh and select the area of faces that need to be smoothed out. Go over here in the properties panel, create a new vertex group and assign the selected faces to this group. Now add a shrink wrap modifier and using the eyedropper, select the duplicated mesh as the target. At first, you'll see the shrink wrap affects the full mesh. So over here, select the vertex group and now it will affect only the assigned faces. Select the duplicated part and enable a subdivision modifier on it. Then for this object, enable the subdivision modifier as well. Now this area is nicely smoothed out. You can also select these faces and assign them to the same group. Now this looks good. 
If we turn the shrink wrap modifier on and off, you can clearly see the difference. And if we change the matcap material, you'll notice this looks clean and smooth with no artifacts at all. All right, guys, that's it for this part. And everything is modeled cleanly and nicely. In the next video, we'll be modeling this part next. And so if you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, drop a comment below and let me know your feedback. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.